Hello dear students welcome to DAV Moil Public School I hope you are doing great with the chapter of human eye and the colorful world and this is the last concept of this chapter that is atmospheric refraction previously we have studied about refraction refraction is nothing but a bending of rays of light when it travels from one medium to another medium is known as refraction in refraction bending of light occurs and secondly the speed velocity of a light changes when it passes from one medium to another medium along with the bending in refraction based on the similar concept we will study about atmospheric refraction as you know our earth atmosphere comprises of different layers of atmosphere so refraction which are occurring with the presence of different layers of atmosphere is known as atmospheric refraction as you can see atmospheric refraction it is the deviation of light when it passes through the atmosphere due to the variation in air density as a function of altitude as you know air density at different altitude varies so since density is varying at different altitude so atmosphere at different region where an species is residing is also changing so because of variation in air density as a function of altitude when when a ray of light which when passes through different air density refraction will occur as you can see a luminescent source of light like sun when emit rays of light and when the ray of light which when travel through different layers of atmosphere as you can see this is the earth and this for an instant if i if if we imagine this brown portion as first layer of atmosphere the second one the second layer of atmosphere and when a ray of light which when passes through different layers of atmosphere it will undergo refraction as you can see this blue line is showcasing refraction if we imagine this yellow light as a incident source and when it passes through first layer if we consider this orange one as a first layer it undergoes refraction as you can see a blue line which is indicating that the ray of light is bending and another another orange light line is there and when a ray of light which when passed through second layer again undergoes bending so we have understood from this figure that whenever ray of light which when passes through different layers of the atmosphere refraction is occurring the different layers in different layers different amount of densities are present as we as different altitudes in different altitudes different densities are there since because of this different density different air particles different water vapors are in there in the atmosphere because of which refraction is occurring now atmospheric refraction can make a distinct object appear to shimmer or even ripple now what do this statement means atmospheric refraction for an instant if an individual is residing near the earth surface and he is trying to see an celestial object like sun so when a ray of light which is traveling through the different layers of atmosphere the person who is seeing the celestial object will see that object will shimmer will up, will try to appear little bit shimmer shimmer means uh, it will at times it will try to appear like a glimpses or sort of twinkling one the rays of light will shimmer and secondly a ripple would be created so these two phenomena will be observed and th even third thing would be observed like th those celestial object will appear in a different uh, manner like for an instant if this celestial object original position is over here the person who is seeing this celestial object will see will have a perception that this object its image is over here not exactly in its true position this uh, person residing over here will have a perception that this celestial object like sun is residing somewhat over here so this have will have a perception because of atmospheric refraction atmospheric refraction causes astronomical objects to appear higher in sky as now it will have a perception that the celestial objects for an instant if if we imagine a celestial object like satellite if a person is viewing that satellite 
he will have a perception that sat uh, that that satellite is ne uh, near about some distance uh, apart from its original position because of atmospheric refraction this situation gets even worse when the atmospheric refraction is not homogeneous not homogeneous means since as we know the climatic conditions at different layers are varying depending upon air particles as since it is not homogeneous not homogeneous not homogeneous means the density of a particular region is not fixed it is changing very frequently as the temperature is changing the density is also changing that's why it is not homogeneous and even 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 in turbulence weather like uh, cloudy weather or a rainfall the air density over a certain uh, layers are changing and when a ray of light which when passed through different layers will undergo refraction certain examples of atmospheric refractions are twinkling of stars deformation of shapes of sun at sunset and sunrise you might have seen twinkling of stars but in reality stars do not twinkle but human who is uh, seeing that star will have a perception that star is twinkling why is it so because of particles which are residing at different layers it will appear to shimmer that's why it it a celestial object will try to appear like a twinkling uh, object another example that like that is deformation of shapes deformation of shapes means you might have seen that during sunrise and sunset the sun is not exactly circle in shape or sphere in shape it is somewhat oval in shape again why is it why is it appearing like this because of atmospheric refraction we will study this and when we study about scattering of light why deformation of sun is appearing during sunrise and sunset firstly we will see about twinkling of stars now twinkling of stars just just as as i was telling stars do not twinkle we have a perception the individual who is observing that star will have a perception that star is twinkling why is it so as you can see in this uh, picture a ray of light is being emit, emitted by this this celestial object like star and as the ray of light is traveling through different layers of the atmosphere it is undergoing refraction for an instant if the original position of the star is over here when a ray of light which when passed through first if we consider this as the first layer when a ray of light passes through this first layer as you can see a normal is created and refraction is occurring so when this refracted ray which when passed through second layer again it will undergo refraction and when this uh, refracted ray which when appeared to this person it will undergo again refraction as you have might have noticed that in each layer refraction is occurring and this individual always uh, try to perceive the ray of light in a straight line as you can see the second line is indicating that human always try to see in a straight line but in reality the ray of light from this uh, this celestial object like star is, is is this one because of atmospheric refraction since human is trying to see in a straight object this person will have a perception that star is located over here so this second line indi is indicating that this person is seeing seeing star in this position not this position but in reality the, the true position of star is this but this person will see this star in this position as i was telling previously the celestial object from the so uh, surface will try to appear higher from its true position as you can see higher from its true position so first thing we have studied about twinkling of stars that whatever ray of light which is coming from a source which when passed through different layers of atmosphere the obje object will appear uh, higher from its true position and secondly when this person is trying to see this object as you can see the ray of light which when passed through different layers uh, here the small small molecules air molecules are present and when this air molecules the ray of light which when pass through this air molecules and here the temp atmosphere is changing frequently because of turbulence with tur turbulence of weather or you can say because of different air densities different atmospheric condition 
particles is continuously changing their position in this region when a ray of light is traveling through different layers and at the same time particle is continuously changing their position since particle is continuously changing their position so ray of light has to as uh, undergoes changing in the path so person which will, which is viewing this celestial object will have a perception that star is twinkling but star is not twinkling the particles is changing particles are changing their position since particles are changing their position in different layers the ray of light will scatter or the ray of light will try to appear twinkle but because of this changing path or, or the changing air density uh, the part uh, the ray of the star is trying to appear or the star is twinkling so these two phenomena are related to atmospheric refraction now the second features of atmospheric refraction are advanced sunrise and delayed sunset as you can see this is a beautiful concept of sunrise or you can you can even say this is a sunset so imagine this uh, same concept with the help of this thing also hold on for a for a second yes for an instant again i'm drawing this as the earth surface and a person is residing over here and the true position of the sun is this so sun is emitting ray of light and as as i was as i told previously your different air molecules different atmospheres are there and these atmosphere are continuously varying now when a ray of light which when pass through different layers of atmosphere undergoes refraction so so the true position of the sun is over here and thousands and thousand rays of lights or you can even say a beam of light which is traveling through these uh, different layers will undergo refraction for an instant for simplicity i'm considering just a single source of light so this single source so as you can see is continuously bending this continuous bending is mainly because of refraction and this person will have a perception of seeing uh, this sun in its apparent position over here but in reality the sun is over here the apparent position of the sun is over here and as you can see a line is created in, in this picture a line is uh, segregating two things you will have a perception that line is segregating two things one is the river one and the other one is cloud one this is a sun and a small line is there bit in between ocean and sun you will have you might have seen in real situation also a small line is there so that line is nothing but the horizon one we call that line in terms of science as a horizon one so this line is a horizon one and sun when sun is below the horizon the re, uh, the sun in in reality when sun is below the horizon but this person will have a perception that sun has already raised why is it so because of atmospheric refraction the ray of light for this person is appearing that sun has already raised but in reality sun is below the horizon the, again in sunset also the same thing is happening the sun still appears but in reality the sun has already went below the horizon so the same thing is happening so because of this sun is visible to us before the actual two minutes before the actual sunrise why is it so because of atmospheric refraction again the sun is visible to us two minutes after the actual sunset after the actual sunset sun is still visible to us why is it so because of atmospheric refraction so i hope you have understood the concept of advanced sunrise and delayed sunset now next concept that is scattering of light like a refraction of light scattering of light is altogether a different concept don't get don't get confused with scattering of light with refraction of light both are different concept let us see how are they so scattering of light is the phenomena in which light is deflected from its path due to interaction with the particles the medium through which it pass for a simplicity simply imagine uh whenever a ray of light which when pass through different particles small small particles 
it will undergo scattering scattering in simple sense you can see it will get split up into n number of direction that is scattering for an instant if we imagine light as a wave the particle would look like this for an instant this is a small air particles small minute air particles for simplicity i have zoomed this and make that particle little bit in large larger one for simplicity this this is the air particle and when a ray of light when a ray of light passes through this air particles as you can see it, it is undergo scattering scattering i just now told it which means it is spreading in n number of direction so this is a single source of light which when hit which when passes through this particle it will under it will spread in different direction if i consider light as a wave this is this would would be the first situation now if i consider light as a particle light if i consider light as a particle which means light is a photon now this small small particle which indicates that light is a photon now if i consider light as a photon so which means the ray of light will get absorbed and reemitted here in this case it was scattering in n number of direction but here in this case it the, the, the photon or the ray of light will completely get absorbed and reemitted reemitted means it will all the ray of light will be captured or all, all the ray of light will be absorbed and reemitted in n number of direction so these are this is nothing but a scattering of light now why the scat in which particles in fact a scattering of light can occurs the atmosphere as you know atmosphere contains dust particles air molecules and water droplets so these three contents are always present in the atmosphere so whenever a ray of light passes through these uh, small small tiny particles it will undergo scattering so based on these scattering occurs dust particles air molecules and water droplets hold on for a second yes so basically the scattering of process involves absorption of light by the molecules followed by reemission or reradiation in different direction as i wrote over here it involves absorption of light here also absorption of light is happening and reemitting in n number of direction again if i consider this as a wave and here in this case if i am considering light as a particle light as a particle it would be called as photon here it would be a simply wave it will be scattered in n number of direction and it will be absorbed and reemitted when i consider light as a particle so scattering of light will occur in particles like dust particles air molecules and water droplets now let us see this scattering of light some common examples like you might uh, you will be studying like a blue color of sky the blue color of sky is mainly because of scattering of light color of sun uh, sun at sunrise and sunset again the concept which is related to scattering of light red color of danger signals you might have seen in traffic signals red light, red color light as red color light are there why is it so because of scattering of light we will see this concept in the coming slides now important things to remember when we talk about scattering of light now rayleigh rayleigh scattering is somewhat related to a very important phenomena which is related to scattering of light if you uh, remember this concept in a uh, slightly uh, if you consider this rayleigh scattering as an important concept you will find it very easy to understand scattering of light in this rayleigh scattering you have to remember a scientist named rayleigh gave a phenomena which is known as uh, rayleigh scattering he told that whenever a size of the particle just now just now i told size of the particle which means the size of the particle would be this one size of the particle in this case is considered as dust particles air molecules and water droplets so if i consider this if the size of the particle is less than the wavelength of light it is elastic scattering this was we will you will understand when you go in high standard about this if the size of the particle is less than the wavelength of light it is elastic scattering another important phenomena rayleigh gave that is intensity is inversely proportional to 1 upon 4th power of lambda this is in this formula you have to remember intensity is inversely i is inversely proportional to 4th power of lambda which indicates that if since uh, wavelength 
is in denominator so wavelength is inversely proportional to intensity whatever as we know light comprises comprises of different colors like seven vibgyor colors so that uh, vibgyor intensity depends upon wavelength of different colors every colors have different uh, wavelength you might be knowing that red have different wavelength orange have different wavelength violet have different wavelength so their intensity is inversely proportional to fourth power of lambda intensity scattered intensity is maximum for shorter wavelength as you know light comprises of different colors all have different wavelength some have shorter wavelength and some have higher wavelength so scattered intensity is maximum for shorter wavelength light so those uh, color which has shorter wavelength the scattering would be more so scattered intensity is maximum for shorter wavelength now shorter wavelength color are basically blue violet these two colors are very shorter in wavelength so scattering would be more for these two colors whereas another phenomena a vice versa of really scattering is inelastic scattering if the size of the particle is greater than the wavelength of light it is known as inelastic scattering here you will study as the time as i am noting note putting down that it is a video time is getting extended so i need to shift on to the next video so i will continue from this in the next video so i am pausing this over here